So what happens when a human tries to swing like Spider-Man? I don't trust. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's gonna be funny. But what if me, an incredibly intelligent and smart human, were to break down what it's actually like to swing like Spider-Man, then build a pair of custom web shooters that keep me from dying. I need to learn as much as I can about swinging like Spider-Man, and I thought my engineering major would help with that, but every time I go to a teacher and ask them how does trigonometry relate to swinging like Spider-Man, they never have an answer for me. So all of our research for this project is gonna start on YouTube. I went on YouTube hoping to find videos just like these, and I did, but man am I late to the party. People who have built real web shooters include the Hacksmith, J Laser Video, Alan Pan, Bill IRL, Greek Gadget Guru, and Tom Holland. How am I going to build web shooters that's better than everybody else's web shooters? Maybe by mastering the most important part of every web shooter shooting. <laughs> I call it the assisted throw mechanism, not to be confused with the automatic teller machine because my ATM takes advantage of inertia. The law of inertia states, an object in motion will continue to move in the same speed and direction unless acted upon by a secondary force like friction or my foot. Oh, I broke it! Why did I do that? Ah. But instead of stopping it, what if that extra force helped propel our object forward? In this example, the skateboard is moving at its initial rolling speed, plus the speed that my arm is moving as I push it along. And that's going to be the assisted throw part of our mechanism. The ATM by itself actually can't shoot very far, but if I flick on my arm while I'm shooting it, the projectile will move at its initial launch speed, plus the speed that my arm is moving as I extend it. Now that we have a relative shooting distance, we can really figure out what structures we're able to swing from. Now if you notice in the tests, we were actually firing a tiny two prong with a grappling hook. And you may think it's weird I'm trusting my life with such tiny hooks, but what's actually gonna save me here is its simplicity. This is the grappling hook I was considering when I first started this project, and this is the one that I landed on. The first grappling hook has two hooks like the other one, however if I wanted to add two more, it has joints here that allow it to come apart and slide in an additional set of hooks. Shut the f but what complexity will do to most projects is it'll give it a lot more points where it can fail. If one of these joints were to come loose, then I'd be plummeting to my death. But with this second one, there's not a lot that can go wrong here. It has two sturdy steel hooks that can be permanently screwed into position so that when I'm swinging, there's less points where it can actually come apart. That would be a shame because we're almost done. All I gotta do left is swing. And that should be easy for me because I'm not a big guy. I weigh around 150 pounds. But if I were to get a rope that could only handle 150 pounds and try to swing from it, I might make it halfway and then it would just break. Because of G-forces. Or centrifugal forces. Or gravity? Hmm. If I weigh 100 pounds standing here, it's 900 pounds of force on my body when we go up the wall. Damn! G-forces and how they apply to swinging is how my body and the web shooter is affected by an immediate change of direction. But I, I don't want to make this confusing, so just imagine I'm a pair of pliers. As it stands, this plier is under one G of force, which is basically the force of gravity. But as I begin to swing it, more Gs get applied to the pliers. And the concentration of all that force is going to be right in the middle when the state of the pliers changes from falling down to being pulled back up. So naturally, the faster and faster I swing it, it's going to break right at the bottom of its swing. And this is bad for our previous calculation, because at the top of my swing I'd be 150 pounds but at the bottom of my swing I'd be applying 450 pounds of force to the web shooter system so we just get a rope that can handle 450 pounds right no and I'm so glad I figured this out before I started swinging because when you tie a knot in a rope and put large amounts of force on it that knot constricts so tightly that our rope becomes more like a plastic that breaks under too much tension so what we really need to do is take whatever rope we buy and have its tensile strength and to compensate for any other forces that I'm not aware of we're gonna get a rope that can handle 1,500 pounds because it's only five dollars more. I've been trying to swing like Spider-Man ever since I was a freshman of high school, and as a result, I have all these prototypes, like this one that uses air pressure, but I was too scared of it because. Don't break my finger! Don't break my finger! Don't break my finger! Or this one where you put your hand through like this, and then it had a lot of spikes, so you can like. And then this one for my first video, which is surprisingly small. I wish I'd done more with this. And all of that culminates to a final result. The only thing stopping me now is testing it. But I'm not gonna swing from it. I'm gonna swing from it. This is stupid. This is stupid. I'm not even gonna wear the mask when I do the thing. Let's get started. Parker. 